Okay, everyone, welcome to a really fast Blender tutorial here on how to improve your fire shader and bring it closer to something that is photorealistic. You see a lot of uh, tutorials out there on how to sh uh, shade uh, fire in Blender, and many of them uh, are the same. And you'll end up getting a result that sort of looks like this. Now, I haven't um, played around with this a whole lot. But you get the idea. Um, it is really just uh, not. <laughs> it is not something that is uh, desirable. You can turn this down to maybe ten or so. So this is where a lot of uh, you know this is how a lot of uh, fire tutorials will will have your fire ending up looking. Uh, but there's a quick trick that you can do instead of just using a multiply node to drive. Uh, well, of course you've got. Your volume info shader, right? You're you're going out of the flame. Uh, you're you're plugging the flame attribute into the multiply node and then into the emission. And you use your multiply node to to turn up and down the uh, the emissive properties of your fire. Great. That's how a lot of uh, that's how a lot of people do it. And it is good for for cartoony projects or uh, if you're not really going for photorealistic, but rather a stylized uh, type of fire. But if you want to take things to the level of being uh, approaching something that is photorealistic, you can use this trick. You can plug your flame attribute into a color ramp and do something like this, right? So if you think about the color ramp in terms of how it's driving the emissive property of your fire shader, this uh, part of the color ramp right here, all the way to the right, is the inside, uh, the very center of each flame, right? And over here, conversely, you've got the outer shell of the, uh, of the flame, the very outside of it. If we tell Blender to only light your flames up in a small little area, thus creating like a hollow shell, right? A hollow shell of your flames. You will end up with a result that looks a lot more real. You can plug that into the strength there after a multiply node and look at the major difference there. Look at how much better this looks than this you see how this is blobby lacking detail uh really it just has kind of the silhouette of the fire and then it's uniformly glowing everywhere and then here is where we start to have something that actually looks like fire there's a couple other things that you can do um uh to get much more realistic results uh, other than this, and that is number one, use something other than Blender to do your simulation. For example, if you use something like Houdini, export the VDB files and then import them into Blender, which you can do now, by the way, you're going to end up with a much better result. I've been able to simulate fire that was 100% photorealistic. You could not tell the difference between a video of fire uh, and an, a render of fire uh, using Houdini. Right now, unfortunately, the implementation of Mantaflow uh, into Blender is not very good. It's very slow. It's very buggy. You'll get a lot of crashes uh, and errors. A lot of the time, you'll end up with this effect where the the entire um, domain object kind of moves around like back and forth and it'll, it'll your your flames will flicker back and forth uh in the frame which really just ruins a render and completely breaks the immersion but uh that's that's pretty much it for this tutorial i wanted to show you guys how to properly shade fire uh and make something that looks a whole lot more realistic so again this is the very common method of shading fire uh, you could make it look a lot better with a color ramp, maybe make the outside edge more sharp, which is what I normally used to do. But now, uh, if you do it this way, it looks a thousand times better. You actually get all those details in there. You can kind of see through the flames. When flames overlap one another, it increases the emissive effect, so on and so forth. It is absolutely awesome. Uh, so I'm not the first person to ever find this, uh, this little trick. I saw this on some other tutorial somewhere, uh, but can't find it anymore. It's been so long. I don't know, uh, where that person is, but kudos to that person who, uh, discovered this trick or at least showed it to me. And I'm just kind of, uh, doing my part and passing on the knowledge to everyone out there who wants to make, uh, better looking fire shader. So with that being said, let's go ahead and render out a quick frame of this. Uh, and I will go ahead and bid you guys adieu.
and there it is. Uh, way better looking fire than you will get from a lot of, of other tutorials in uh, less than 10 minutes. So there you guys go. Really quick trick to improve your fire shader like tenfold uh, in less than 10 minutes. Hope everybody enjoyed. Have a blessed day uh, and happy blending.